Okay, here we go. One var stats. Everything I can get from one var stats. What can I get from one var stats? Let's just, there's a ton of information on one var stats. What can I get from one var stats right now? Gavin, one thing. The mean. Where's the mean located? What's it? What's its title on there? How can I find out when I calculate it where the mean is? That's X bar. Let's go. Other things I can get. There's a ton on there we'll use. Ton, Tom, let's roll. I can get, well, let's just go uh, the five number summary. Which consists of what? Okay, quartile one. Oh, anybody. What consists of my five number in case I ask you to do a box and whisker tomorrow? Median. Quartile three, and what are the other two values that consist of the five number summary? Well, that's not part of it, though. Minimum and the maximum, yep. All can be found on the calculator. What other values are on that one var stat? We're not even close to done. What else is on one var stat that we've used in the past? Try it out if you want to. I'm sure you got a list already created in there of numbers. Go to one var stat, calculate it. There's something else we've definitely talked about in there. Carol? Standard deviation, correct. There's two types of standard deviation. There's SX and there's OX. Anybody remember what SX was called? Sample standard deviation. And OX, population. Always use population unless sample is specifically asked in the problem. All right, so those are all the things just under one bar stats. All the things under one bar stats. All right, what others have we used on here? We've used definitely linear regression, number four, never number eight. Again, that's a linear regression. What else up here? We've used two more, well, one up here, one's are hidden a little bit. We've used quadratic regression. Again, not answering these questions tomorrow for you. And the fact that your calculator is going to do all the work, I don't know how we cannot perform decent tomorrow. And there's also zero. EXP regression, and that's for if I ask you tomorrow, which I probably will, for an exponential regression. Huh? All from the calculator. And that's it for that screen. Anything you want to ask? I have a, I don't have many questions I'm going to answer today from that review packet. It's going to be you. Also, just letting you know, I am not checking this tomorrow. Wait, I'm not going to spend time checking it. And as soon as you come in, I'm going to give you the test. So you get all your questions out now or after school today. All right? We don't have time tomorrow for people to come in and ask 10, 15 minutes worth of questions. All right, so you're just going to get your test as you walk in. If you want to try this out, that's fine. All the answers and work are on Aspen. Let's go, Marco. Uh, you always use the median. You, the median is always the best representation if there's an outlier. Okay. You could still find the mean. Doesn't mean you can't find it, but the median would be better represented than the mean would be. I could give you a set of scores and say, where's the outlier? I think there's one in there that says calculate it. Okay. It's an extreme. It'll be, you can see the extreme value. All right. I got a couple questions for you that I'm going to let you go on your own. Here we go. Let's start with seven.
which of the following data sets has a standard deviation closest to zero? And I don't want you to use your list, though. I don't have time to do it right now. Remember what standard deviation? The lower the standard deviation, what do you know about your numbers, Gavin? Uh, the, the closer they are to each other. So which one up here basically is going to have the lowest standard deviation closest to zero? Which are the numbers are the most consistent, the most near each other? Go ahead, Gavin. Three. Three. Done. Tomorrow, if you want to put those into separate lists and find each standard deviation, that's fine. All right, but just remember, the lower the standard deviation, the more the scores are packed in closer to each other. Okay? Yep. No, that's your R value, which we're going to get to right now. Okay? Which of the following correlation coefficients? That's what our R value is. So we do a linear regression, it'll have an R value. Exponential will have an R value. The greatest correlation between the two variables. What do R values range from? Negative one to positive one. Anything close to either two is strong correlation. I don't care if it's negative or positive. Any number closer to either one is strong correlation. So out of these four choices here, which one's got the greatest correlation between the two? Here we go. Uh, start hearing from some of you. Doom, doom. Here you go, maybe. Come on, come on. All right, no time for that today. We'll get back to it. Uh, strongest one up here. Yeah, don't, don't cross it out because it's negative. All right, negative and positive. Positive just means one goes up, the other goes up. Negative means one goes up, the other goes down. Okay, as the closer they are to these two numbers, the stronger they are. Tom, that's no correlation. They have no, co like, here you go, uh, IQ and shoe size would be a zero correlation. They have nothing to do with each other. Okay, so that would be something close to zero, I assume. Okay, no correlation at all. Good. All right, a uh, few more. Yep, let's go to that dot plot. I forget, I don't, I cut off the number there, but. 15. Okay, art camp, age distribution. I just want to do parts A and B. What percent of kids attending are less than eight years old? Anybody know, at the top, did I give you how many kids there are so we don't have to count all the dots? 25, so it's something out of 25. Can you guys count how many are less than eight years old for me? How many are less than eight years old? Find out where eight is, less than eight. How many are less than eight? Should have six of them, right? Here's six, seven, eight, so I'm counting one, two, three. Four, five, six out of 25, what percent? About 24%. Yes, Emma. That is different because then you would count the eights. Okay. Yes, you, that would be totally different because you have to count how many are also eight. Correct. Yes. Correct. Which is greater, the mean or the median, and by how much? Ooh, boy. All right. I'm doing this on purpose because I want to use the calculator to do this. So mean, median. Okay. Let's all go to our list here, and let's talk how, what the best way to put this stuff, this dot plot, into our list. I got like 10,000 things open here. Let's close, close. Here we go. I don't know what you guys are putting in. Hopefully you're not. I'm going to use two lists here. I don't know how, if you understand why I'm going to use two lists or how, but I'm going to use two lists here. All right, I can start on. Here's what I'm going to do. In list one, I'm going to put five. And then right next to it, how many fives are there? Two. Two fives. So instead of typing 5-5, five, five, I'm going to do 5, and then on the L2, I'm going to do, hey, there's two of them. 6, how many 6s? 
One. How many sevens? One, two, three. Eights. One, two, three, four. I'm going to, on L2 is how many times they occur. All right, so go, let's go ahead, go to L1 and L2, clear them out. I guess we don't want to open today, huh? Perfect. There we go. It's just nervous. What's it go up to? And everyone, everything's got a value. I don't have to skip over anything. Okay, a little help here, guys, so I don't have to go back and forth. How many fives? All good here? Okay, ready? Where do I go again? Calculate the mean and median. Where do I go? Can't help you tomorrow. Stat, calculate, which one do I want? Okay, now hey, I'm doing this on purpose. How many lists do you have going right now? Two, so you gotta tell it L1 and L2. If you only have one list going, just say L1, get frequency list cleared out. Okay, if you put it in two lists and you're finding the mean, median, standard deviation, put L1 and L2. If it's one list tomorrow, leave it as L1. Calculate. Okay, here we go. What's my mean? 9.04. And where's the median on here? Keep scrolling down. You'll find the median as 9. So which one's greater and by how much? Well, the mean is greater by... Very slim margin, but the mean is greater by... 0.04. What? Like 0 .04, like 0 .04, like 0.04. That's fine. All right. Uh, I'm not doing this one with you. I just wanted to, because the directions are a little bit different, I want to make sure if you tried these out tonight, you knew what I was asking for. Part A says, what are the relative frequencies? I've never used that term. Percents. Okay, what are the percents? So how, what percent of people pick cola A? What percent of people pick cola B? What percent of people pick cola C? Okay, so that's what I'm looking for tonight. All right, so when you see the answer key, you'll know it exactly what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, was there one more here? Yeah, I think, yeah, 18, I wanted to try real quick. Got to read through the actual problem here. Age of a person is X. The number of hours of sleep they get is going to be Y. And I did a linear regression. This is what I ended up getting. And there was my correlation coefficient. What's that negative 0.12? Can you tell me how it relates to the problem? Okay, it's slope. Right, it's slope, but how does it relate to, can you tell me how it relates to age and numbers of hours of sleep? How's that going to relate? Marco, what do you think? Okay, now put, yes, that's true, but now put an actual numbers to it now. So every year you're older, so every year you're older, how many hours, is, how much sleep do you lose? Yep. Yep, every year you are older, you lose, how many hours, Marco? 
0.12 hours of sleep. Yep, that's what that point negative 0.12 represents. Okay, and how do you know you lose it instead of gain it? How do I know I lose it instead of gain? It's negative, all right. What about the 1.15? Or the 11.5, excuse me. What's that mean? I know that's my y-intercept, I get that, but what's that mean as far as the problem goes? When I start, okay, close, close. How old are you when you have 11.5? What did I plug in for x to get 11.5? Zero, so what's that mean? When you're born, zero, you, are, you have how many hours of sleep? 11 and a half. Okay, that's what that 11 and a half is, all right? So when you're born, or zero age, newborn, whatever you want to call yourself, all right? So when you're born, you get 11 and a half hours of sleep. And finally, before I let you take over, what's it mean when your correlation coefficient is negative? I have, we have talked about that. If it's negative, what's that mean? Correlation coefficient negative, what's that mean? Between the two things you're testing. Well, let me, go ahead, Fiona, yeah. Okay. Well, if it's positive, remember the example I gave you. Hey, something that's negative, lung capacity and smoking. What happens? I lo but lose on one end, but... So what's it telling me here? If it's negative, one goes up while the other goes to what goes up here. So as age goes up, what goes down? Hours of sleep go down. Okay, that's what it means when that number is negative. It means one go, one's going up while the other's going down. What if it's positive? Be careful. Be careful. What if the correlation coefficient is positive? Can they both go up or they can both go down? All right, they can both go down. Questions? Yes, Marco, go. What do you mean? Okay, here you go. You agree this is a scatter plot of a positive correlation. Right? Low, low, it's still going to be positive. Even if I come into this direction here, it's still going down. Okay? It, yeah, one goes up, the other goes up, but I can also say the same as if it goes down, so does the other. I still form the same graph. Right? Okay. Questions? Phones are staying away, deaf without a doubt, unless you want to go do this in a restricted study hall. All right. Phones are staying out. I don't care if you work with somebody else. That's fine. All right. Let's get going on this. With about a couple minutes left, you might want to get out the answer key. All right. Let's get going. There's no staring off into space here. Let's get this done here for this last official test tomorrow.